here to do is to uh, present to Mr. Douglas E. Gregory, the federal prosecutor in the so-called um, so Wolf Pack uh, RICO uh, legal case, a petition signed by uh, roughly 700 residents of Rochester and Monroe County. And uh, the purpose of this is to really impress upon the prosecutor, as well as uh, local law enforcement, the sheriff department, RPD, the FBI, and any other um, uh, legal um, entities that are involved, that we're serious about this uh, kind of thing never happening again in our community where uh, these uh, police forces, these uh, uh, so-called law enforcers, uh, uh, law enforcement agencies, combine their resources and their efforts to swoop down on our community like stormtroopers and arrest uh, poor black people and uh, charge them uh, unjustly under uh, RICO laws, which we know were designed to bring down the mafia. While at the same time, we can see situations in places such as Canandaigua where people are caught with caches of weapons and drugs and they're uh, not charged under the same laws. So this is why we contend that it's, it was a racist action and our community was not prepared for it, but we certainly intend to be prepared if anything like this ever happens again so that we can respond in a timely manner before the media, before the mainstream media and law enforcement agencies collaborate to poison the minds of the people in our communities so that they end up uh, really on the side of people who uh, do not have their best interests at heart. And so we want to now take the petition up to Mr. Gregory's home and ring the doorbell and hopefully hand it to him. We suspect that he's probably not home. In that case, we'll just leave it at his uh, mailbox or doorstep uh, with our note uh, explaining basically what I've just said. Pay close attention to the surroundings uh, that this man lives in, the kind of plush wealth uh, that he's a part of, uh, and, and contrast that to the poor neighborhoods that they uh, feel they have a right to invade and fabricate uh, information about people being involved in racketeering and conspiracy and so forth uh, while they sit here uh, in this plush uh, environment and enjoy life. And lastly, we want to say to the uh, brothers uh, in particular, uh, many of whom we knew what would happen with them in terms of them copying pleas and beginning to turn evidence on each other and so forth. We predicted that would happen. That's what always happens because we know the tactics that law enforcement uses. They intimidate people and threaten people. Some of them were threatened with 20 year sentences, life sentences, and so they began to buckle. But what we intend to do, there's one case in particular that we, we plan to use to demonstrate that had they uh, stood fast and, and had they known their rights and had they known how to engage the people who were supposedly representing them, many of them would have ended up with less time, uh, maybe in some cases no time at all. We don't know if some of them were guilty of uh, uh, some kinds of crimes or not, but we're certainly um, sure that they were not guilty of conspiracy and racketeering and all these other trumped up charges that they were um, that they were um, uh, charged with. And so we, uh, the struggle continues.